Welcome on Speak Your Mind. I'm your host, Shami Lochanlal, and uh, an ind- independent committee has been set up to review bus fares. So today we are going to talk about bus fare review. My guests are uh, the CEO of Consumer Council, Premila. Welcome on the show, Premila. Thank you. And uh, the president of uh, the Fiji Chamber of Commerce, Peter Mezi. Welcome on the show. Thank you. So uh, an independent committee has been uh, set up to review bus fares. Uh, the bus fares were last reviewed in 2011 when the price of diesel had skyrocketed. Uh, fuel prices have decreased since then. So, why is it important for bus fare review now? Is it because of e ticketing being introduced, or is it imperative that a bus fare review be done at this very moment? I think there's a long history to bus fare review, and as what I know that the last bus fare went up in 2009. Uh, when the diesel prices started increasing from 2008 due to the global f- uh, financial crisis, uh, if you recall during that time, the food and fuel prices both were skyrocketing. And that's when the Bus Operators Association demanded for fare increase. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously the government had to consider many other factors. And because uh, of unreliable data that we had at that time, Mm -hmm. uh, it was very difficult to actually determine bus fares. And ultimately, because of uh, uh, disagreement as to how or how much the bus fare should go on, in 2008, if you remember, the the bus operators went on national strike. It was only after national strike the government managed to get an agreement in place And as per the agreement, there were two very important aspects. Mm -hmm. One was e-ticketing, that they will agree uh, to um, put e-ticketing as a a mode of collection of of bus fares. And second aspect was that they cannot ask for a bus fare increase unless and until Mm -hmm. the the world uh, global diesel price would be X amount. Mm -hmm. So these were the two important aspects. But what we had seen over the years, the diesel price after the global financial crisis started coming down, but the fare remained same. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, over a period uh, that is after 2009, or around that time, uh, when the fare was increased, um, there was this um, understanding as well that the subsidies will be stopped. So the government stopped the subsidy, Mm -hmm. but they gave particularly the fuel subsidy, but they gave other concessions to the bus operators. Mm -hmm. And that was done to ensure that the bus uh, operators would be able to renew their fleet. They were looked after. as I I think there was some concession given on tires and and other things. And other rebates. Yeah, other rebates, yes. That was basically the intent. Mm -hmm. So when you're asking whether uh, the bus fare review is being done just because of e-ticketing, you may say, yes, probably. Because that was the part of the agreement. Mm-hmm. So whenever we have a, 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 we, 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 a, any, any committee has been formed or, or we talk about bus fare is being reviewed, people's mindset is that it may go up. Does bus fare review mean that the, price will, the fare price will increase or will it decrease? We don't know. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's, this will be it's after a consultation. It's, it's a, review. a review of... Not just the bus fare, I think. It's of the service that the public are getting yes. and what the operators are giving. So how will the review of bus fares impact every Fijian? Well, there's a lot of talk at the moment that uh, people are having to walk long distances to get to buses. I mean, yesterday's review was quite important for us to look at. And so we'll be looking at everything to do with the transportation, I I believe. we It really depends what the public are going to come to us in their submissions mm-hmm. um, and what the bus operators and companies are also going to uh, provide us with. So uh, would we be able to talk about how many routes do we have in Fiji and how effective is bus service in these, in these routes? Because this does tie in the element of bus fare review. Uh, what I know that the road uh, road r- route licenses that has been issued is around 188, and uh, that is to about 66 companies, and that figure may have changed. Mm-hmm. 
This figure was confirmed or established in 2009 by the Orion consulting firm that reviewed uh, the bus industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. So they may ha that figure may have changed. We don't know. But uh, it is very important for us to look at the review from the perspective of three important things. One is the traffic congestion now, mm -hmm. because people do complain that the buses don't come on time. Uh, and if they are following the old timetable when the traffic was much lower, mm -hmm. then obviously the buses would have been able to follow the timetable. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know what's the situation now, and that's for the public to tell us mm -hmm. uh, what's the situation on the route. Yes, uh, because using. while I was preparing this program, I was talking to some people, and I said, how has e-ticketing affected your travel and bus? And someone mentioned to me that uh, bus services in Lamy has gone all hayway. Uh, a lot of people are, are suffering in that area, and, and the bus companies have shortened their route, especially in Lamy area. So this would be a great time. Uh, for you to call uh, Gold FM uh, listeners, please do call on 3220906 or 3220907 if you have any queries related to bus fare review and, and the rules you're following, maybe conditions on buses, etc. And if you have any questions uh, regarding public consultation. Now let's go back to the independent committee. How many people are in this uh, committee and, and what will they do? There's eight of us, I think. Um, yeah. we're going to go through all the submissions from the public so what we do depends on the submissions that are given to us uh, from the bus operators uh, from the public and that is the review process we're going to take right around the country mm -hmm. so that we can hear everybody's point of view before we make any decisions so then we'll be looking at another of a number of factors that make up what is called the bus fare so has the committee decided on the number of factors that will be considered while determining the new phase or, or reviewing the bus phase? I think there are two, two parts to it. Mm -hmm. One is, of course, the consultation, where uh, we'll be having uh, the real information from the road users uh, or bus users. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, uh, there'll be other data that will be collected through different agencies. For mm -hmm. example, the current data from Vodafone uh, through, you know, uh, in terms of uh, bus fare collection. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it can be from the tax office. Uh, it can be from LTA in terms of uh, road route licenses and number of operators. Uh, also through the survey that we'll be conducting uh, on, through a questionnaire. So this survey will again uh, be questioning on key uh, areas and we'll be getting viewpoints from uh, the bus users. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to compile all this information. So. Uh, you can see that it's not just one simple method where we just do consultation, but also through questionnaire and um, a desktop uh, collection of uh, data. Mm. And, and something where you are able to reach public at large, maybe social media, and I think, which we are going to talk about soon after this break. We, we'd also like to know that, uh, was this uh, bus fare review considered because Fiji Buzz's operators wanted a, a review in bus fare, or was it public? We encourage you to call on 3220906 or 3220907 soon after this very short break. Be sure to stay with us on Speak Your Mind. We are talking about bus fare review, which is of interest to you. Speak your mind on Gold FM, and uh, my <coughs> guests are Premila Kumar, the CEO of Consumer Council, and the President of the Fiji Chamber of Commerce, Peter Maisie. We are talking about uh, review of bus fares. An independent committee has been set up to do the review. So, did the Fiji Bus Operators Association want bus fare review, which is why it has been reviewed, or was there a general concern? Because we haven't been talking about bus fare review for over past many years, I guess. Uh, again, we have to go back to that agreement where e-ticketing was agreed to. And uh, if the fuel prices come down, that's when the bus fare will be reviewed. So I think uh, it's simply that the fuel prices have come down and that calls for the bus fare review. Mm -hmm. And I can say to you, Shami, that uh, the Fiji Bus Operators Association has been very supportive of e-ticketing. Yes, And I recall in the various budget forum that I have attended, 
The Fiji Bus Operators Association has also been asking about e-ticketing and the delay in the implementation. So it seems that all stakeholders are on the same page, but we, I do understand that we do have some implementation issues with e-ticketing. Mm. So I had a call a while ago where we were in uh, commercial break, and, and she wanted to know that why is there a reason for a bus fare review now? What are other factors? Other factors? Mm. Yeah, you may like to... No, well, mm -hmm. I, I think it's not just <coughs> the, the the price of fuel has come down, um, and there have been in the VAT also. We had a reduction in VAT, which mm -hmm. was taken on board, mm -hmm. but also there's been increases in costs. So the review is there to ascertain what is a fair price for the consumer, for the passenger, for the the um, public, and what is a fair price for the owners. Mm -hmm. And so it is very timely that the review comes in now, um, especially as all the reports are coming in that e-ticketing uh, means that the bus operators are most probably getting a bigger slice of the pie. And I don't think I'm talking out of turn mm -hmm. by mentioning that because it's been very public knowledge that they weren't getting all the returns that uh, was given in fares. Mm. Now, so we have to look at all of that and then make decisions. I don't know, Pramila, you had more. Y yes, um, I agree with what Peter is saying, that we need to uh, consider the developments that has taken place from 2009 when the last uh, bus fare increase was mm -hmm. given. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to take into consideration the various costs associated with it uh, to ensure that the bus industry remains viable mm -hmm. and, and, and for the consumers to pay uh, the right fare based on reliable data. So when we say right fare, would that right fare after uh, con public consultation and, and consultation with bus operators and other stakeholders, does the right fare mean would translate to increase in bus fare? Oh, we cannot actually say this mm. uh, right now because we don't know all the information and this is why we are calling for public uh, mm. submission but 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 generally whenever we call for for a review whether it's bus fare taxi fare and other things general mindset which i mentioned earlier uh, would be an increase in in bus fare so if there is an increase in bus fare how can the bus fare increase be justified because a lot of people do talk about the condition of buses the routes etc will this be taken into consideration as well yes. while doing the review I think part of the review is finding out from the public what they really want in a service. Mm -hmm. So if they want um, more frequency, which seems to be a, you know, of concern to the public at the moment, as you mentioned, do they want a better standard of bus? Now all of that has a cost factor applied mm -hmm. to it and that's what's going to make it up. So also you might find that in rural bus routes where we have uh, the roads are not so good, and that, that there's a huge cost factor in you to, in being on those routes. Mm -hmm. But is it fair that the rural public pay more than those living in the urban areas? Mm -hmm. I don't believe it is. I think there should be fairness across the board. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to find out. So what kind of feedback or input are you looking at getting from the public during this consultation period? How, how will the survey be carried? We would like to hear the positives and the negatives. Mm -hmm. Uh, of that particular service mm -hmm. uh, and they can tell us um, what are some of the areas they're happy with mm -hmm. and where improvements are needed mm -hmm. and what are their main concerns regarding the current service and uh, maybe we, we can we can go deeper into discussion and and to suggest some solutions yeah I think this this, this would be an appropriate time and a moment for people to call and, and give suggestions we could kick it off now so, so when does the actual public consultation start? Has it started yet or is it at planning uh, stages? I think we have... Uh... Um, no, they start tomorrow. Um, our first public consultation will be in Rucky Rucky mm -hmm. at the Ra Provincial Ground. Uh, we'll be there from 9 o'clock on till about 11. And so we really want them to come on board immediately. So we're quite serious about this. How important is it for public to come to this consultation, how much will their view be considered? Is it very important? Because normally when we do get go for a public consultation, people say, yeah, maybe I should go or not. Is it important for people to come? How important it is? 
Look, passengers are the customer of the bus owner operators, okay? It's not just the transport system, mm -hmm. it's a business. And if we've got 66 companies in the country, some of the larger companies have got over 100 buses on routes, it's a business to them. Mm. Um, but they have to recognise the importance of the passenger. So without the customer, there's no business, and it's just mm -hmm. like anything. So mm -hmm. it's a... Um, you, we have to consider both sides, and I think that that's not done enough, and I think that's why we're going out mm. to get the public to come and see us. So we're starting tomorrow, and for the next week, we will be going right around the country, including being in Lombasa up north on Saturday. So the, the, the consultation period is for uh, a week only? Uh, the consultation period is for a week, but we also are accepting submissions through... Uh, text platforms um, on 636, uh, uh, 336 Six. at Vodafone uh, Inc. or Digicel. And uh, also uh, we have an email address, uh, uh, Facebook page, and then you can write in. So we're not just asking you to speak to us, we're asking, we've opened up every platform mm -hmm. And look, they could even come through to you, mm -hmm. and you can submit them to us. Yes, I think this is serious. Be very timing, like I, I keep on saying, do call. You can call now on three two two zero nine zero six, or call on three two two zero nine zero seven and start off. Tell us uh, what is your view, what are your ideas, what would you like to say? Because what you're going to say now will definitely be considered. So this will be part of public consultation, which we could start now. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'd like to know, um, will the bus companies be uh, consulted to, and how much of the bus companies, uh, compared to public at large, how, how, much, how much would it matter when it comes to making a decision? Whose decision will have an upper hand? Would the bus companies make the, the call, uh, whether there should be an increase and decrease in fare? So we have more questions. We'll, we'll be right back. Please do call after this break <coughs> on Goal FM. Speak your mind. Welcome back on Speak Your Mind. I'm your host, Shami Lochanla. And uh, with me, I have uh, Premila Kumar, the CEO of uh, Consumer Council and the president of the Fiji Chamber of Commerce, Peter Mezi, and Premila, you and Peter both are on the committee, the review yes. committee, which is an independent committee. So there will be consultation from individual bus companies also. Will you be visiting individual owners, or will it be like a, a get-together forum session uh, to be able to consult with these people? I think initially the, the submissions we are requesting is from individual bus companies. And, and that's for the committee to decide later on whether they would like to have a focus group discussion mm -hmm. uh, with a group of uh, bus companies. Now, Peter, you uh, mentioned earlier, which is, of course, yes, uh, public are major stakeholders. We are the consumers. Mm. If people don't turn up, like we were saying that it's important and pe public are urged, who will have the upper hand in decision making here? Uh, do we say that uh, the bus companies will then decide? No, the committee will make the decision. Mm -hmm. uh, the bus operators, even if the public don't turn up, and I hope that never happens. Yes. They um, need to come. They need to come. Yes. But we will be looking at views that we have received already mm -hmm. and submissions. So it's even if they don't turn up, at this, as long as they email or come in on the text platform mm -hmm. or Facebook and or write to us, um, that's how we'll be looking at everything. So we will still be looking for fairness across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the reason I'm stressing this is because we really want people to come. We urge public to uh, come. Uh, to exactly, because I have seen that the consumers, they don't prefer writing. Mm -hmm. They love talking. Yes. And they want to explain what the problems were. And this is a golden opportunity for them mm -hmm. to come for this consultation and uh, they'll be able to express their views yes. in person. Pramila, you have been closely, you, all, you always continue to work very closely with the consumers and the other stakeholders. Uh, since the introduction of e-ticketing, we'll come back to the consultation process a bit later. How has e-ticketing affected the income of uh, bus companies, the bus operators? I really don't know uh, how it has affected. But one thing I know, 
uh, that the consumers have been raising their concern mm -hmm. with the whole implementation of e-ticketing. Yeah. But I have no idea what's the revenue like. Uh, but that's something that uh, probably the committee will look at. Right. So, so uh, what will be the role of the committee? Coming back to the committee, eight people are in the, in the committee, independent committee. What will be the role of the committee before compiling a submission for the uh, economy ministry, Ministry of Economy? Uh, we will be going through all submissions mm -hmm. and we are also putting out survey forms which are being taken around uh, and we'll be asked, we want to meet the public really, we want mm -hmm. to ask them the questions and a lot of them have been raised already. Mm -hmm. So such things as some people are saying they're now paying more for their bus fares, mm -hmm. others are paying the, saying they're paying less, but also they're saying the bus isn't coming now or we're now arriving at work late. Now, mm. that is affecting business. So we have to, across the board, look at everything. Yes. And that the committee will be reviewing everything. It will be looking at the results of e-ticketing. I mean, we've had a month of it now, so we should know the answer to the question you just laid, which mm. we don't know at the moment. We may find the bus companies are losing money. We may find they're making a lot more money. Mm -hmm. We don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it seems that everything is sort of linked to e-ticketing, which is good. We, we're moving forward. We're progressing as a nation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, countries overseas who have been our role model. Uh, uh, so so we, we are sharing ideas. So now which means that if if person is traveling from route A to route B, the logistic which is, in, which is going to be involved in determining fares from stage one to stage two, do you think it's achievable? It, it, looks, it looks huge at the moment. What will be some challenges? I, I think it's achievable because uh, such factors need to be considered when you're determining a uh, bus fare. Mm. Uh, what is the cost of providing that service? And cost is not just associated with uh, the infrastructure uh, or, or, or the bus itself, the tires, the fuel, etc. It's also about the quality of service, timing, mm -hmm. uh, deliverables, you know, whether they provide quality service at, at the right appropriate time. Mm -hmm. uh, that is equally important. Mm -hmm. um, and all those factors need to be uh, considered uh, along with uh, other data that we'll be collecting from different sources. So what's the outcry from uh, the buses, op the bus operators, Fiji bus operators, and their owners. What have they uh, said so far in regards to uh, bus fare review? What are their concerns? Well, we haven't received any yet. Um, obviously, they're taking a bit of time to get their submissions together. We'll be in a better position to answer that sort of question as they come. Mm. So the only ones are the public ones, which they've made mm. public. Uh, and But at the moment, they appear to be quite happy with the situation. Mm -hmm. Happy with the situation but of e-ticketing? Yes. But also, Shami, uh, the point to be noted here is that uh, the committee also includes the president of Fiji Buzz Operators Association. Mm -hmm. So he's part of this uh, eight-member independent committee. Mm. So he, he, their views will not be taken into consideration when it comes to survey, or will will the committee will ha have will have will be representing in in this case Fiji bus operators president is there, so he, his views will be taken into consideration. Uh, collective views of everyone. I mean, for, for example, I represent consumers. It doesn't mean that I'll be just talking from the consumer perspective mm. because we have to look at the industry yes. from a holistic perspective and it's good to have a representative yes. from Fiji, Fiji Bus Operators Association from the technical input that mm. is required. Mm. Is v, uh, will there be any in, input from uh, uh, the service provider, in this case uh, Vodafone? No, they're not part of uh, the team, but obviously, as I said, uh, in terms of data collection, uh, we would be uh, consulting them. Mm. Uh, will there be separate survey form for Fiji uh, bus operators uh, and separate for public? There is just one form. Yeah, there's, there's one template that's going out on the questions. Let's, let's have a look at the survey forms. Would you, like to, um, would you like to talk about what kind of questions in there? Maybe after break, we'll, we'll take a break and then we'll 
go and I will talk about the survey forms. Meanwhile, <coughs> if you want to call and contribute and give your suggestions, please do call on 3220906, 3220907 on Speak Your Mind, which is on Gold FM, and the show is live on Gold FM right now. Welcome back on Speak Your Mind, and uh, I'm Prabhula Kumar, the CEO of Consumer Council, and Peter Mezi is here from President of the Fiji Chamber of Commerce. So, uh, let's talk about the survey forms uh, in regards to review of bus fares. What kind of questions do we have to ask public? Well, the obvious questions, some of the questions are, you know, are they a public transport user that's submitting? Um, how often, you know, do they travel daily, weekly, or once a month? And details of their last journey. So we're asking a lot of questions that relate to what they are talking about. Um, uh, we want to know the name of the bus companies that they use and the reasons for their travel, whether it's for school or work or something, or for personal shopping. Mm -hmm. And you know, leading questions, are they satisfied with the bus schedules? Are they satisfied with the, um, and asking them to actually rate on the routes and the fares and things. And the big question, do they think the bus fares are too high? Mm -hmm. Are high or affordable, low or too low? Mm -hmm. Because some people keep saying we have very cheap bus fares. Mm -hmm. That really depends on your income because when you talk to others, it's quite high. Yeah. And especially if you've got a large family. So mm -hmm. we've got to look at everything. Uh, so we want to know if they think the bus fare should increase or decrease. Yeah. And we'll be looking at that. And we want to know the location they're traveling on, the sort of route it is. Is it tar sealed? Is it shingle? Is it very bad? Can the bus always travel during yeah. all weather? Um, I think those are the main questions that will be coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to know how they travel from their home to the bus stop. Some people are taking other transport before they get to the bus because yeah. we don't have enough bus stops. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Those are areas that we're going to be looking at. And we need their opinion on the level of the bus fares mm -hmm. currently changed, the, the comfort of the bus. Yeah. Whether it's clean, pollution free, safety. This is becoming a big issue. It is. And safety. <coughs> now, that's a huge issue, mm -hmm. especially with the problems we've had in the past. I mean, we don't have a good record on some of our safety, in, especially not just in buses, but in all transport, mm. mini buses and things as well. And of course, we want to know also about that. Have they traveled? Do they travel? some ways in carriers, in minibuses, or how do they get to their bus sector. And also we have to consider, as I said before, that rural customers may pay more now, but why should they? Yeah. So we have to justify why there's higher charge there. Government has upgraded a large amount of the roads right around, especially in the northern divisions, and, well, right around the country. But how would you justify increase in bus fare in rural areas exactly. if they travel the same route? I mean, the distance is The distance is the same. Is same. Yeah. But again, it's a cost factor based on the, uh, the, the, the quality of the road. Mm -hmm. So this is where Peter is coming from, that we have to look at the developments that has taken place mm -hmm. yeah. from the last review till now. So we consider all these factors. Yeah. I mean, it might be time also, and these are questions that we'll be asking, to look at not having standard fares. So, you know, section one is 68 cents, etc. and what's the next section? It may be if you've got a better class of service, you're prepared to pay more. Mm -hmm. It may be that um, if they give better service and come every 15 minutes instead of every hour, you're prepared to pay a bit extra, even if the bus isn't full. So we've got to consider a lot, and it has to consider you know, it must be easier for bus operators on the main routes around Suva. 
but it's very hard for those that have to go up into the Tailevu and the Mosi or uh, up the Singatoka Valley or something like that. Mm -hmm. So those bus operators and that, that find it very difficult. So is this bus fare review confined only to public transport buses or to mini buses and public transport as in taxi to travel taxi? At the moment we are looking at the bus fare, but obviously we'll be looking at the competing interest mm. uh, surrounding b uh, buses. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not looking at uh, the fare uh, to do with other transport. Mm. So this is specifically for bus. Yes. So, so the buses will only provide good buses, I mean, I mean the owners, uh, it, it, it because they want good income, since we are the consumers, th there's a question that, that pops uh, in, in anyone's mind. Shouldn't it be the other way around, that your product has to be good to attract more consumers? Uh, recently, we have had stories of some buses, uh, they, they, they have heavy smoke emissions, uh, the bus seats are not good, bus caught fire, uh, and very a lot of very narrow seating and yeah. It's, it's a lot of lot of negatives coming into this, and and uh, like I said, the bus fare review could be after the review could be increased in bus fares. Don't you think the the conditions of the bus should be better to be able to get uh, a better return from consumers? Because it's buying a product. Why would I want to pay uh, more if the product is not good? How would consumer council yeah. look into that? Oh, absolutely. It's about uh, the quality of the service here. Why would you want to pay uh, more for a poor quality service? Mm. So uh, again, uh, these factors need to be considered. And we've seen there are a number of operators who have upgraded their fleets. But then there is another uh, group of uh, operators who have not mm -hmm. upgraded their fleet, despite the concessions given by the government, despite a hefty increase in bus fare in 2009. You know, and, mm. and the bus fares went up to uh, in, increase by almost 65 percent for mm. different routes. Mm -hmm. So, so what happened during that period uh, was that money also utilized uh, in upgrading mm. the fleet. So, if the fleets are upgraded and the quality of the service improves, then obviously, uh, what should be the bus fare um, that needs to be paid mm -hmm. to that particular service? Uh, Pramila, you've been working very closely with the Fiji bus operators also and you've been the voice of the public. What are some challenges which the bus operators face? face? Do they say that they need more money to upgrade the buses? How? What are some things that they talk about? Well, I, I mean, I would la have love to have someone from Bus Operators Association, but they couldn't make it today. Mm. Well, you know, I've been very critical about the bus service in the country from uh, 2007. And continuously, I've been saying that we need to modernize the way the service is being delivered. Uh, and if you go back to my grandfather's days, it's the same old story, same buses running on the same route. Mm. And you hop onto the bus, the bus driver sits with a till, uh, with a, um, a box, mm -hmm. and you put your money, and then he gives you a ticket. And sometimes he doesn't even give you a ticket. And without ticket, you just go and sit. Mm. That has been a same way the business uh, have been functioning. So we want to change that system. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that um, uh, because of the driver intervention, there has been a fraud. Mm. And fraud affects not only the bus company, mm -hmm. it also affects consumers and the government. Because yes. the government is not able to collect the right taxes. Mm. Uh, the bus companies are not able to collect the right revenue so that they can upgrade their a fleet, fleet yes. and unfortunately consumers end up paying more in fares mm -hmm. because if the bus operators keep complaining that the revenue is dropping yes. and um, it is affecting the business, mm -hmm. so obviously the bus fare will go up. Yes, we'll, we'll take a break and another question that I'd like to ask after the break is, is there a question, uh, would you be interested to ask a question, the, the, the type of the quality of buses, the seats, you know, uh, the type of buses conditions at, at the moment, whether it should be removed, would public have a say in that too when you do this review soon after this break? You're on Speak Your Mind and this is our last segment. An independent committee has been set up to review bus fares and, and 
this is a big responsibility on your shoulders. The, the, uh, a member of t- eight people compromised of the committee. What kind of pressure do you feel? What kind of challenges are you facing? I, th- I think it's a job of responsibility. Yeah. Uh, you want to make a fair decision where both parties uh, are happy with it. Mm. And you need to balance it out by collecting uh, the right data and by going out to many more people, hearing them and the mm. submissions we receive. Mm. So, so that's where the, the uh, public consultation becomes very, very important. Uh, because without that, it becomes really hard. Mm. And the, that question you posed, you know, uh, about the pressure, the pressure will mount up if we don't have the right information to base our decision. Mm. So to assist the committee in, in making a fair judgment, uh, what we are looking for is uh, more information from the public, submissions from the bus operators, mm. uh, other data from other agencies, so that we can make an informed decision on mm. this. Uh, there are certain people, there may be certain um, uh, business owners who, who often travel or from time to tra- time use public transportation. Would you urge them to be part of this survey too? In fact, their workers travel. Mm. So from the business perspective, yeah. let Peter explain. Yes. Look, um, most people travel in a, in a bus at some stage. doesn't mm. matter if it's travelling from Nandi to Suva mm. because the airline's not working. We all do it. We may not do it around the city as much as our staff do. Mm. But I, I can't get across enough that the importance to any business, the growth in any business, is the people that work for you, work with you. It's mm. your team. Mm. It's, and they are the general public that are using transport all the time be it buses, taxis, whatever. Mm. But we have to protect them. If we're a good business and a good business leader, you've got to look after your staff. And I can't stress, and that's what we stress at the Chamber, of course, all the time, Mm. that it's a partnership. It's not business and being successful is a partnership of your employees and your employers. And we can't afford them to be late to lose time because they can't arrive. We need good bus service and we need a, a fear mm. that is reasonable. Yes. Uh, oh, so like we talked about the pressure and the, the challenges you, you face, so what methods, let's talk about the methods again, what methods are in place to get majority Fijians engaged in this review? I think we have looked at all the methods possible mm. uh, to, to get the viewpoints from the public. And to start off with is the public consultation. Which is starting tomorrow. Mm. Starting tomorrow. Then there is a public uh, survey form which starts from November 1st, which is again tomorrow. And uh, we have got the text platform. Uh, In other words, we're using the social media as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Facebook is there. (coughs) Uh, So each and every mode that we could think of, we are using. Uh, to get the public uh, views, uh, as well as the bus operators' uh, opinion. Will you, at, at the end of the day or every second day, review the the response? Uh, and if the response is slow in coming, what are the steps? Uh, what what other plans do you have? I think um, first of all, it's in the interest of everyone. Uh, it's the public as well as the bus operators to come on board mm-hmm. uh, because the committee has been set, uh, has been established to do the job mm-hmm. and they will do the job uh, based on other data as well. So it's good to get opinion from consumers as well as bus operators so that we'll have all the information and we'll be able to make this decision in a holistic manner and not from mm-hmm. uh, just one piece of information. Mm-hmm. So the survey form was also designed in case the consultation, um, if there is poor turnout, then Mm. the survey forms are there to back it up. So how many questions would you have in a survey form? Um, The survey form is going to have about uh, 20 questions on it. Uh, This will be a collective uh, uh, survey? uh, No, then the results will be coming in and we'll analyse them all. How soon do we expect the results as in new fare or, or, or the result as to what came out of the review? I think the terms of reference for the committee was very clear mm. that we need to have uh, the fair uh, reviewed and whatever uh, the outcome to be announced from uh, 1st January 
2018. So you can see the time frame is very short. Yes. And the work is quite large. Mm. So we have to meet those deadlines. So and the results will be announced on 1st January or will there be some kind of enforcement? Uh, uh, as far as uh, what I know, and I may be wrong, uh, the idea of this committee was to come up with some decision by 1st January mm -hmm. 2018. So will it be, will it, will it change the lives of every Fijian? Will it have a positive impact again or a negative impact? What are you foreseeing? I would like to think that it does change the lives. Even if the fares go up, it will mean more bus services, better service. I think if we look at it that way, mm -hmm. but it's a review. It's not saying it's going to go up and it's not saying it's going it's to go down. down. Mm -hmm. What We may decide that it should go down, but we want to make sure if it goes down, the service is still good. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford not to have a bus industry. Mm -hmm. So will this committee then go to the extra length of uh, making sure that the, the bus companies, if in case there is an increase in fare, like Peter, you said, if, maybe if there is a decrease, the services may affect the condition of buses. Uh, bus operators may not be able to spend more money to be able to you know, equip buses and have better services. Will there be a committee then uh, to monitor that buses do provide quality service? That's when LTA comes into uh, picture? Yeah, I don't think that's the job of this committee no. uh, because committee has been uh, established for a particular purpose. But if you look at the LTA Act, uh, as a regulator, they have got a lot to do here because they are the ones who should be uh, working on the route licenses, uh, bus timetable. They also regulate bus fares and there are many other aspects. Mm -hmm. So, as a re In fact, even setting the standard uh, for the buses that are operating on the road. Mm. So they are the ones who should, who should be looking at it. So, so I, I strongly believe that, you know, we've been hearing a lot from the public in terms of quality of service. That boils down to the regulator, mm. whether the regulator is really enforcing the regulations or not. Mm. So would you like to conclude uh, with your closing remarks? We've got about 30 seconds each left Well, here. I think if anybody's worried about who's going to monitor it, just look at Pr Pramila because she'll be monitoring anything yes. we decide. <laughs> uh, now, I encourage everybody to come. And tomorrow we'll be in Raki Raki and Tavua and on Thursday in Nandi and um, Latoka and Ba, Friday in Singatoka and Saturday in Lambasa. And then we're back around... Uh, Valdevu and Suva and the Surrey next week. Okay. So it's a two weeks uh, of consultation. Yes, yeah, so we want to see everybody. All right, good. Thank you very much, Pamela and Peter, for coming on the show. So please uh, be sure to be present at this public consultation uh, for bus fare review, and there are other methods. If you don't want to go and be present there, you can email. You can text. I think text number is uh, 336, text Vodafone, Digicel, and Ink Mobile. But be sure to be part of this buzz review. I'll meet you next week again on Speak Your Mind on Tuesday at 12 p.m. on Golden. Hey.